Well, good morning, everybody. This is Tim Green with Rattle Magazine. Welcome to Poets Respond Live, the only Sunday morning news show that discusses current events through the lens of poetry. Thanks so much for joining me. Before we begin, I should say that uh, Rattle is a publication of the Rattle Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit working to promote the practice of poetry. We've been in continuous publication since uh, 1995, and we are unaffiliated with any other organization. We do this because we love poetry and the power of words to share our stories. If you agree with what we uh, we do, um, you can help us out by clicking the like button and subscribing and letting your friends know that this is a fun thing to do and participate in. That's all we ask, and I hope you can do that. So click that like button wherever you're watching this. Um, now... Um, This is a mostly an open mic show, and how you join and participate is you can send me a, a chat message over Skype to Rattle Poetry, all one word, um, or you can call our phone number, 818-850-7727, let it ring a few times, and um, I will call you back when the time is right. Um, we have a, a line of posts. I'm going to call Alejandro Rescue Day first, today's poet that we published. We'll talk to him. Then um, Jake Alar, or Aller, um, Rashima Verma, we'll, um, Jennifer Protit, a whole bunch of poets. Everybody's good to go. Um, let's see. And so good morning, everybody out there. Jessica Dawson, Catherine Swanson, Michelle Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer good to see you. Um, Richard Westheimer, good to see you too. Um, let's get started. I'm going to give uh, Alejandro Escudé a call. He's our the poet that we published this week. Hey, Alex, let me pull you in. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm coming through okay? You are. You are live on uh, Poet Respond Live. Um, haven't seen you in a long time. It's been... Uh, the Brightwood Literary Festival was the last time I saw you uh, when you were teaching with us there. That was, uh, that was right. two, three years ago or something like that. How you been? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Just, uh, you know, doing this remote teaching thing. Oh, which was yeah. Is it a, lear a learning experience? Yeah. How, how do you find that? Is it really hard to do or is it, um, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, I didn't realize how much you rely on interpersonal connections um i think the kids miss it too and so that was a big uh sort of wake-up call that mm -hmm. you know tech tech doesn't solve everything <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i mean my kids um you know somehow they're extroverted even though i both uh, megan and i are like the most introverted like i could not see other people for for weeks at a time and i would not care and both my kids just love being around kids so it's really sad yeah. to not let them have very much interaction at all we have a few friends that are like um you know, we let them play with it at a distance, but that's about it. And um, yeah. for, for the last three months, I can't imagine being a, a kid at this at this age. It must be really tough. No, yeah, I have an extrovert and an introvert, uh -huh. so I got to see both. Yeah, and uh, my daughter, who's an extrovert, she she suffered a lot, and her schoolwork suffered, mm -hmm. so she just wasn't motivated. Yeah, you know, without peers. Yeah, uh, son's different. My son can just work on his own in a in a vacuum. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's weird. And I, I hope that we get back to some kind of, uh, interaction, you know, personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but your poem that we published today is not about that at all. Uh, your poem, no. uh, for Poets Respond this week was my body is Antifa, which, um, yes. I just thought was such a cool metaphor, especially because, um, Antifa is sort of a Rorschach test kind of organization. Like some people, like everybody sees what they want to see in it. And so the yeah. metaphor for that as the body and the sort of conflict within your body is just really cool. Is there anything you want to say about it? Uh, no, I think I, I think it's poets respond. The whole thing works, I think, for me best when I don't even know what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And then I end up saying something, mm -hmm. you know, and. I just knew I didn't know what to think about the situation in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else I have an opinion. Uh, but when I saw that, it was so mixed up. And so, like, you know, who's who's behind it? What's going on? And um, I don't think anybody even knows. I don't I don't even think the, the police chief knows. Yeah, you know? yeah. She's like, never. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I think that that's great for poetry when, mm -hmm. when things are mixed up that way. And, 
Uh, I honestly didn't know what I thought, so I wrote the poem. Yeah, yeah, that's where the best poems usually come from, because poetry is a tool of exploration, not really a, a yeah. tool of um, rhetoric. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. you know, it can be used for both, but I think it's best used when it's a tool of exploration. Um, True. Yeah. So, um, True. so do you want to read it? I'll put it up on screen. You, you're not going to be able to see it. You have to read your own version. But um, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So, my body is Antifa. There's a city in my body, and it's been barricaded. Its walls spray painted, mural full. Less a collection of neighborhoods and more a labyrinth of walls made of garnished elephants so that the metropolis wobbles and throbs. Belonging is its motto. Every citizen on his or her knees, the only cars a caravan of bees, and no governor like a Macy's balloon pulled down a boulevard by a team of black-clad troops. My body is Antifa. And I stand for language without the burden of truth. I give you cracked hands, tear-gassed eyes, and unidealized love. No statues to view, killers on horseback, young soldiers marching to certain death, dated clothes so bloody they stand alone. Let me guide you to the precinct, where the, where the restraints are scrapped like metal to forge new human braces, cups, plates, large shared spoons to pour sick meat into glorious molds. Yeah, just such a rich imagistic poem. Do you want to read the um, the um, the explanation the or note? the note? Yeah, yeah, because I thought that sure. the note was part of the poem that I thought was really interesting too. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I said uh, it's time for a recreation. We all feel like tearing everything down and all over. I know that's how I feel within my own body, where my spirit resides. The story of the protesters in Seattle who took over the Capitol Hill neighborhood made me think of Walt Whitman's call for a greater democratic spirit in America and his symbol for that, the human body. It's sacredness, the way it cannot and shouldn't be violated. Perhaps that's the only real conflict there ever was. Yeah, yeah. I think the comparison to Whitman... Um... It was just really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, thanks so much for sharing that, Alex. It's always great sure. to talk to you, and I'm um, so glad you could sure. join us today. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye. Yes, yeah, so that was Alejandro Escudé. Um, we interviewed him um, for rattle number, um, I think it was 56, maybe. Um, Alejandro was the um, immigrant poets issue, and Alejandro um, was from Argentina, so we talked about that and the issue. Um, really great poet, really fun guy. I love him a lot. So um, glad we could see him and, and call in today. Now let's move on to the open mic portion. Once again, let me remind you that um, you can call in if you'd like. The number is 818-850-7727, or you can send a, a Skype message to Rattle Poetry, all one word. And um, if you leave a, if you call over the phone, I will call you back when the time is right. So just let it ring a few times. If you uh, use Skype. Send me a chat message, and then I will call you when the time's right. Um, and also, you can send, if you um, submitted your poem to Poets Respond, I can just put it up on the screen from there. If you did not, or you have something new or different, and I want to emphasize, too, that um, you don't have to share poems that you wrote this week for Poets Respond Live. For the, um, for the submissions to Poets Respond, it's supposed to be something that you actually wrote this week. But if you have a poem that, that you wrote, earlier, like we've seen a few times, like last week we had uh, James Reagan on, and he shared a poem that he'd written a while ago um, for George Floyd um, that was sort of, you know, um, used as a response for George Floyd too now, although he'd written it some time ago. Um, you're free to do that, so feel free to share older poems that just happen to relate to current events, especially like around holidays, that works a lot, or um, whatnot. So let's give, um, is it Jake, let's see, I said I'd do Jake first. Because we missed him last week. But it doesn't show he's active. So let's do um, Rashima. Actually, this, this kind of relates to um, what we were talking about before we started talking about the poem. Um, hey, Rashima. And, and let, me, let me let everybody know, um, if I call you, make sure you turn off your... Um, 
YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching it. So there's nothing in the background. There's a delay that becomes confusing. Rashima, are you there? I can hear you. Yeah. Do you want to turn on your video or do you want to just leave it on audio? Try to turn this on. Um, yeah, go ahead if you'd like to. But if not, that's okay too. But we can hear you. Okay, great. So I think I'll probably leave it because I'm not very familiar with Skype, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah no, no problem at all. But I'm so glad. And, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from India, Gurgaon, India. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And you sent me a poem over to the open mic at rattle.com email address. I think. Yes. Um, or actually, you just submitted the poem. So it's on. Um, let me find it for you. I didn't have it quite ready. Let's see. Um, but do you want to say anything about your poem as I, as I try to find it, like what you were writing about? Sure. Yes. So um, we've had a very stringent lockdown here in India. Um, for the past three months, and I have a son, I mean, he's nine. And as a mother of a young child, I see these children going through a very hard time. You know, we've, we've kept them locked up at home. They need to be out playing in the, in the open with their friends. And I think it's heart-wrenching to see them this way. Yet they continue to display, um, you know, a maturity and um, a strength which is far beyond their years. And I continue to be very amazed at what I see these young children, um, you know, what they're capable of during this kind of time. In fact, sometimes my son gives me strength uh, when I, um, I feel as if, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to, um, you know, kind of waver in this, in this time. And I think um, this poem is a sort of tribute to all the young children out there that they can hope for a better tomorrow. And I hope we can give that, give that tomorrow to them very soon. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing this. I, um, you know, I have my kids are ten and six, or about to turn ten and six, and it's the same way. Like they, um, they're just trapped here, kind of, and um, they're both yeah. going, and they they get along really well together. But um, they need some more interaction besides for each other, I think. Um, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, they're just missing out. I don't know. I hope it's not stunting their development too much. I think you know, kids are so flexible and resilient. Hopefully, when this ends, they'll pop right back into the new normal. Um, yes, yes, anyway, I hope so. So your poem is up on screen, if you'd like to read it, whenever you're ready. Yes, I uh, would like to read it now. I can't see it on the screen, though. Oh, yeah, you um, won't be able to see it. You'll have to look at your own version. But the, Okay, I have it here in yeah, front of me. Yeah, but the people watching live can, can see it. Great. So uh, it's called You Shall Again. Um, I see him by the pain. Unblinking are his eyes. Like yesterday again, he stares out at the open skies. The bulbul comes and sings. The sparrows flutter past. What happened to my wings? He turns to me and asks. Oh, how I wish to run, play tag and hide and seek. Under the twilight sun, his eyes, they seem to speak. The friends I have not seen, the games I have not played, the trees but are still green, it seems we went astray. I yearn to feel the breeze tugging at my hair. I long to climb the mango trees and pick a bunch to share. I kiss atop his head, the dimpled hand I take. Just think you went to bed, and soon you shall awake. The world will then be new, just like a rising dawn, pristine as morning dew, and hope will be reborn. Then you shall run unbound, with a mate or two, around the grassy mound, along the river blue. The laughter will return, the sounds of jocund game, no longer will you yearn. Yes, you shall play again. Thanks so much. That was uh, Rashima Swarp, Swarup um, reading her poem, You yes. Shall Play Again. Thanks so much for joining us. That was a wonderful poem. I love the rhyme, too. You know, We talk about this all the time, but um, I, I wish more poets used rhyme and meter than, um, than do these days. So it's great to hear that. And um, really, really touching, sweet poem to share. Thanks so much. 
it's so heartening to you know to hear that about the rhyme thing because i think somewhere poetry is you know the whole essence of it is is what the, the, the word the word i love what you did and thank you so much for this wonderful session Oh, it's it's always my pleasure. These are so fun. A great way to start out my Sunday morning every day and, and your Sunday evening too over there. So um, take care and, and have a good rest of your yes. day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. So that was um, uh, Rashima Swarup, Verma, uh, reading her poem, You Shall Play Again. Uh, let's see. Who is next in line? Um, we have a... 203 number. Let's see who that is. Um, actually, let's do the 803 number. I think 203 here. Well, the phone is ringing at this uh, 803 number, but no one seems to be answering. Uh, we'll try it again later. Let's instead go to um, Jennifer Poteet. Um, once again, I should always say that I'm uh, kind of calling you from the future. So um, it's gonna be a little confusing so uh, make sure you shut off your stream, your YouTube stream or, or Facebook as you answer. Hmm. Well, Jennifer Poteet's not answering either, but I know. Oh, here she comes. Hello. <laughs> um, good to I see you. I figure that out. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, we have you on. Shut off your stream if you haven't yet, uh, or at least mute it. But shutting off is better because then it doesn't use as much bandwidth. I did. Okay. And then if you want to be on the screen, the camera button um, is not on yet. So if you want to click that so everybody can see it, that'd be great. But oh, if you don't cool. want to, that's fine, too. Here you come. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Jennifer Poteet. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. And I, I think this is so wonderful that you do this. I'm going to do it every Sunday. Yeah, it's it's really fun. And, and you know, seeing different faces and, and you know, all these names that I see over the years. Um, you know, I see all your poems. And it's so great to meet you in, in person a little bit every, Same. every Sunday now. Um, <laughs> so so where are you calling from, first of all? I, um, I'm, I'm in Montclair, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And um, the poem that I, that I wanted to share is probably not uh, the most optimistic. It was written more out of a feeling of despair. Mm -hmm. um, but like the first poem uh, that was read, I didn't know where, what, where I was going. Um, I was kind of tying two things together, the personal and what's going on in our country. And I didn't intend for that to happen, but I think it... it um, it works, and I got a, a good poem out of it. Probably the first of many to be written about our turbulent times. Yeah, they definitely are. Uh, which poem is it that you wanted to read? It's called In a Nursing Home in Michigan. Okay, let me pull that up really quick. Um, okay, it's, it's ready. Whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. In a nursing home in Michigan, my ex-husband Larry no longer understands the news on television, our White House, the People's House, surrounded by barricades, a fence, the National Guard. The president retreats to his bunker. Larry's become a fortress too, locked to everyone. Morphine replaces his beloved martinis they sit my ex-husband up in bed, but don't think to clip his beard, sweep crumbs from the sheets. I see his drugged eyes flutter through his sister's app. I know we've failed you, Larry. I know we've failed you, my beautiful dying country. Oh, that's a heartbreaking poem. Uh, thanks for sharing it, Jennifer. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, 
It was cathartic to write. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, the emotion comes through. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing it. Thank you again. Yeah, have a great rest uh, of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was Jennifer uh, Poteet from uh, Montclair, New Jersey, reading in a nursing home in Michigan. Um, let's see. Let's call that, that uh, 803 number. Try to call us back. So let's try the, the 803 again. Hey, this is Tim with Rattle. Uh, did you want to? You have to shut off your stream so there's no, because there's a delay. So shut off uh, your, your computer. Okay, sounds I'm going to be reading a different poem. Okay, well, first of all, who am I uh, talking to? Oh, this is Melissa Chappelle. Melissa Chappelle, good to uh, hear from you. Did you um, submit it to Poets Respond or email it to me? No, I didn't, but I can I can email it to you. Yeah, do you want to email it to me really quick? Um, Let me. And then people can read along as um as you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Let's see. I'm gonna put you on speakerphone for a minute. Okay. Um. Yeah. So just email it to open mic all one word open m i c at rattle dot com. And actually, while you're doing okay, that, I'll, I'll just call you. I'll just call now. you back. I'll call you back at this number next. Okay. So I'm going to hang up now. I'm going to hang up now, but I'll call you back and once we have that poem, okay? Wait, tell me, the, tell me the email address again. It's open mic, all one word, O-P-E-N-M-I-C at rattle.com. Open mic at rattle.com. So I'm going to, once I get that, I'll call you back, probably the next, after the next caller. Okie doke. Okay, Good thanks. Time. Yep, bye. Okay, let's do um, Michael McGill. Let's see, I'll try to find Michael's poem. Hey, Michael, Hello. good to see you. Let me pull you in. Oh, you're over here. There you are. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, fine, fine, thank you. How are you doing? You okay? I am doing great, yeah. It's uh, it's another wonderful day in the in the world, I guess. Um, <laughs> or yeah, something. You're, you're something's a, going on anyway. A very different part of the... Well, I have lovely memories of Los Angeles. A long, long time since I've been there. 1997 oh, yeah. was the last time I was in Los Angeles. So lovely memories of Santa Monica and Hollywood. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty far <laughs> out. We're up in the mountains. But um, but yeah, it's not a, oh, right. a place to live. Lots of good hiking up here. Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And so where are you calling from? I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. Very okay. nice. Yeah, it's always great to hear from people overseas. Um, yeah, and, and the poem, the poem you wanted to read was Plague. Do you want to say anything? Plague, about it? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's from uh, based on an article earlier this week in the Guardian, um, and it was about feral chickens that had been uh, attacking a village in New Zealand. They were all under control um, before lockdown, but then they've bred, uh, oh, wow. and so the villagers are completely being ran amok with these uh, feral chickens. So, mm -hmm. oh wow, that's quite a story. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. It's on screen okay. for everybody, but you'll have to read your own copy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Emerging in the night, nets to turn our village into the warm shrine. In the night, nets to insulate us villagers from harm from each other, softly. After we ask, where have the birds gone? It was a plague, after all, which kept tourists amused, which held a mild charm, albeit menacing, a wily, sleep-defried charm, quaint, ruthless. So farewell, then, to the flock after lockdown. We tread towards factories where frozen birds wait patiently for the knife, for the fork. Uh, excellent poem excellent ending too i love that thanks so much for sharing that was michael mcgill okay, no again problem. reading thank you. plague yeah thanks great, it's great thanks for calling in okay you know problem. nice to meet you yeah nice to meet you too bye okay um let's see next up let's go back to um let's see 
yeah, this is um, um, Malvika Vazalbar. Let's see if we can connect. I think, um, yeah, it looks like she's in India too. Well, it's ringing. Mm, I hope we're not getting the connection problem. Sometimes with um, Skype to India, there's this, it just doesn't connect. But yep, but didn't connect. We'll try again later. Still, still no connection. We'll try again later. Hopefully we can get that to work. Um, let's see. So Anita Larrick will do that next then. Hello. Hi Anita, how you doing today? Let me uh, let me I'm... pull you in so everyone can see you first. Yay! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so um, so how are you, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Toronto. Ah, nice. It's we have a lot of um a lot of Skype um viewers and participants are in Toronto. A lot of poets there, I guess. A good poetry scene, you think? Yes, definitely a lively poetry scene. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's great. Like I used to think of um. Um, a few like Portland, Oregon had a big poetry scene or, or in you know, that little Portland area. There are certain areas that do and Toronto is really standing out lately for me, just in my head anyway. My issue is that I relate to the American scene as well. And a lot of people were all little, little, little uh, echo chambers. Like people in Toronto don't don't know about, you know, about Boston Review or about you guys. Everybody's their own little bubble in a way. And I'd love to break it out. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, well, so, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so, what what did you want to share today? Was it old, old lady? Yeah, old lady. Oh, if I could, if I could, how's that? Is I hope it's not too blasphemous. Oh no, nothing. There's no no limits here. <laughs> so uh, whatever you want. What this is a, this is a, a voice of um, everyone's perspective through poetry. So whatever okay. anybody wants to share is free okay. to share, and there, nothing yes. is nothing is too yeah. much. So um, yeah. so um, so do you want do you want to introduce it though? What's the poem about? Um. It's about victims and heroes, old and new. But above all, this is about a, a, a change of the guard. Mm -hmm. And it's anthemic. It's a what happens, what if. Great. Well, it's it's ready to go whenever you're ready to read it. Okay. Um, old, old Lady Jesus. Into the darkened spaces of the city, the old woman shuffles, feeding the minds of magic seekers with writings, melodies, jazz riffs, film clips, and conversation. She fishes for the lost and perplexed. Loss is forgetting without putting something back. She's forgotten chores and errands, replaced them with love, imagined through the multiplying cells of theater, art, and music. This aging daughter of God rewrites sacred scripts, she awakens story in you, knot by knot, fills you slowly with voluptuous words rising, conjures up ecstasy, but wobbles on swollen ankles and mounting pain. Young doctors of progress see only a sick old woman. They probe, inject, send away body samples as leukemia cells fill her bone marrow and spread. Faithless Romans, the daughter of God, lies in your hands. Do something to save her. Who sits in a wheelchair, held up by multiple strings. Her face, a cinema of demons and fish. Who prays for all people to be stars, burning in the freedom of darkness. But only elders and the drowning see her. Who now waits for others to relieve the pain in her abdomen. Bloods ooze from her into stool and consciousness. Who tries to hang on to drum solos as she rides the monster waves, the smallest of seeds writhing, unable to think for all the blows. City drowning, blackness rising, melody. Very nice. Thanks so much for sharing. I love the little haiku at the end. It's an interesting structure I didn't expect. Um, very cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. Once again, yes. that was uh, Our Lady Jesus by um, Anita Larrick from uh, Toronto, Canada. Thanks so much for calling today and sharing Th that. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, have a great day. Have a rest of your Thank day. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll try uh, Malvika again. Hopefully that'll it'll work this time. She called me back. Ah, here she is. Okay. 
Hi. Hi, Malvika. This is a uh, yeah. You're yes. Ready to go? Let me pull you in so everybody can see you. And if you want to turn on your video button, you can. If not, you can just okay. do audio. Here you okay. go. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So thanks so much for calling in. And um, let me see. So so your poem is is um, our lungs are burning. Our lungs are burning. Yeah. And um, and yeah. where are you calling from? I'm calling from India. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. Okay. I love having people from from other countries join in too. It's just wonderful. Thank you. This is this is fun. This is more like a campaign. Yeah. You know. It is. This is a yeah. fun initiative. Yes. Yeah. It really is. Well. Um. Yeah. So is there anything you want to say about the poem before you start, or just? Um. Uh. Yes. You know. In, it's our lungs are burning. Is in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and just for George Floyd. Uh. I read in the news that uh, his last words were, "I can't breathe." Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise also, but especially being a whistling artist, my work uh, relies a lot on breath, its control, its regulation. So uh, have someone say this uh, was very disturbing and the reason was even more disturbing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yes. yeah, it was the most probably the most disturbing video I've ever seen. Of the, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Okay, so I will yes. put your poem up and you can read it whenever you're ready. But you have to read your own version. Okay. 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 Our lungs are burning. Our lungs are burning for that someone who said, I can't breathe. Our lungs are burning for that someone was breath bottled in a black skin. Matter needs a skin to breathe, but not the spirit. In our raging breath lives he, regardless our shade of the skin. Our lungs are burning for that someone was our breath bottled in a black skin. Our lungs are burning and we breathe for him. Awesome. Thanks so much. That was, um, once again, Thank you. that was uh, Our Lungs Are Burning by um, um, Malvika Valzalwar. Thanks so much for joining us That's today. Right. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks. Have a great Thank rest you. of your night. You too. Thank Bye. you. Let's see who is up next. Um, hmm. Let's do. Let's do this two five six number. Phone is ringing. All right. Hey, this is Tim with uh, Rattle. Did you want to share a poem today? I would like that very much. Awesome. And uh, who, who exactly am I talking to? You're talking to Jarrett Lacey, and I'm calling from Huntsville, Alabama, sir. Oh, great. Jarrett. I didn't mean, find your poem, though, so let's see. Sure. Uh, it was entitled The Dragons. It was, okay. I submitted it. Okay. Let me, uh, that might be an easier way to look it up, because I'm not sure how to spell your name. <laughs> J-A-R-R-O-D. Um, yep, I got it. Jared Lacey. Okay. Here we go. Yes, sir. And, and did All you right. want to um, explain anything about what it's about? Uh, sure. The poem was just simply triggered from an incident that happened last week uh, out of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, about a lawyer who spat on a black teenage protester uh, doing a George Floyd and uh, Black, Lives Matter, black Lives Matter protest. That's basically what triggered it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, well, I like, uh, and, I like, and I like to share that with you guys. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, whenever you're ready, sure. uh, it's on screen I, now. Go ahead. All right. All right. This is the Dragons. Their imaginations hoard many mirrors. They see, but, is, but it is easy, forward and backward, inward only. A beehive with one hole in it. The reverberations are hazardous waterfall crashes that unsettle their sanity and blood. Occupants of an antique set contributes in the present past defects that click, click a trigger of a gun in them like this. Of the instinct in beasts full of heat and guilt. Innocence is a crowd apart and unknowing. It eventually will feel disrespect in the form of a filthy garb. Something from man's lawlessness is screaming hard. These things have been masquerading as the same. Old skin reveals a peeper scaled that weaponizes what a mouth details and shoots off at what is good and antithetical. At what lives is a cannon hawking for the last lick. Only the cold-blooded spits. That Excellent. was the dragons. 
Yeah, excellent. Thanks so much for sharing that. Great. I love no the, problem. the pacing of that poem. Excellent lines in there. Thanks so much for sharing that. I really appreciate no it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do, Tim, and you have a good day. Yeah, you too. And, and once again, that was uh, uh, Jared Lacey. The dragon. Yeah, Jared Lacey reading The Dragon from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Thanks so much, Jared. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. Let's see. Let's see if we got... Um, we still haven't gotten... Um, Yeah, we still haven't gotten that, that poem yet from um, whoever it was that we talked to. And I don't have the phone number or um, the 803 number. Whoever that was, the 803 number. Uh, I still haven't gotten your poem yet, so I can't call you back. Um, remember, email your poem. If you haven't submitted it to Rattle, email it to open mic, all one word, O P E N M I C at rattle.com. Um, yeah, whoever that was that we talked to for a minute and, and they were trying to email me the poem, I still don't have it yet, but I'll call you back when we get it. So uh, send it over to openmicatrattle.com. Okay, um, let's see. Who should we do next? Let's do, uh, so we've done phone a couple times. Um, let's call up uh, Michelle Parks. Um, oops, let's do it. Let's take this in. Well, let's see. The 219 number in calling. Michelle, I don't think sent me the poem yet. So <clears throat> um, instead, let's um, go to, let's do this 416 number. Phone is ringing. Hi, this is Tim Green with the Rattle. Who am I talking to? Hi, Tim. We spoke already. Oh, it's Anita. Okay, Anita Larrick again. Okay, so so you called and um, and Skype too. Okay, uh, yeah, no, I got you on Skype, my friend. Yes. Yeah, no problem at all. Well, I'll. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, thanks. I just didn't realize because all, all that shows up is a number for the phone calls. Okay, now um, I know the system. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Try to make sure I call somebody who. Let's just take this incoming call since the time's right. Hello, this is Tim with Rattle. You're live on the air. Would you like to share a poem? Yes, I would. Thanks. And who am I talking to? This is, this is Chris Beaver from ah, Kirkland, Washington. Chris Beaver, good to see. You. I'm so glad you could make it today. Oh, me too. Um, this is a poem in response to some articles about the silent march in Seattle on uh, June 12th. And uh, had, there were about 60,000 people who turned out and silently marched through the streets of Seattle, really without much or any police presence along the way. And uh, the news about Seattle in some places has been pretty uh, frightening, but it's actually been quite peaceful and uh, productive. And the different places where the protests have been taking place. Yeah, yeah, I've seen so many wonderful. Even the one in our um, small town, we had, you know, we have a town of only five thousand people. I think I mentioned it last week, or maybe two weeks ago. It's hard to keep track of time, but um, we had a wonderful, just a really nice tribute with a lot of people came out, um, and um, I was really impressed because in the the old times um, of of doing like war protests and things around in this town, uh, nobody ever showed up. <laughs> and for this, it yeah. was really really wonderful to see the turnout and the and the just the um, I don't know the amount of care that, that people have. Um, I want all of these people to vote. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and, the, and it gives me hope. That's for sure. Um, so here's the poem. Okay, go ahead. Seattle, silent march. Even the clouds formed fists in support while the calico march walked Seattle streets in silence. The rain came to wash away some tears, some shame, the harsh pain of birthing overdue change where justice has gone wrong for centuries, moved along with the momentum of a long funeral procession. Masks, hoods, umbrellas, soaked shoes, rivering through paved neighborhoods, a flood of good, commitment, hope against hate, the undeniable truth, 
that we shall overcome someday. Beautiful. That's it. Yeah, yeah, great poem. Uh, yeah, that was Chris Beaver again. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I, I love doing these things. Um, and I'm, I'm just so glad that everybody um, wants to call in and share poems every Sunday with me. So thanks so much for doing yeah. it. That they're very moving. Bye-bye. Yeah, goodbye, Chris. Um, once again, that was Chris Beaver reading uh, Seattle Silent March. And um, Chris Beaver's been in Poets Respond before. Um, let's call up uh, Bill Friedman. Let, let's see if it's here today. Yeah, let's see what he has. I don't know if he emailed me a poem or not. Well, the phone is ringing. William Friedman's calling from um, uh, Israel. Bill, oh. you, Bill, you there? Yeah. Hey, I, uh, we don't have video yet. Want to click your uh, video button? Oh, uh, let me see. Oh. No, huh? Yeah, oh, there I am. you're on. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us again from, from Israel once again. Um, and I always ask, but how are, how are things in Israel this week? Uh, well, uh, not so good. Uh, you know, we opened up and people got very careless, mm -hmm. just took it for granted it was all over and uh, paid very little attention to masks and social distancing. So we went from a, a bottom of about 10 or 15 cases a day to now well over 200 a day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what they'll do about it. You know, you can't start all over again, but they, I think they're going to try to pull back at least somewhat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what did you want to read today? And have you sent sent it to me? Uh, did you submit or um, email it to me? Yeah, I, I did. Do you have it? Um, let's see. What 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 am I looking for? Correction. Correction. Um, did you submit it to Poets Respond? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I sent it to you. Okay, let me see. Maybe maybe to Tim at Rattle. Yeah, let me look it up really quick and try to find it. Um, okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah. Um, June yeah. 11th. Yep, I got a correction. Uh, and and okay. do, do you want to say what it's about or introduce it at all? or just? Uh, it? Well, it'll be obvious what it's about. Mm -hmm. But I really, um, have you got somebody else there while I look for it so you can go, come back to me? Um, yeah, sure. Or, um, yeah? Well, is it going to take... Because I have to look for the poem. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Well, right. I'll, I'll hang up and I'll call you back in just a minute. But we, we have this all primed up and ready to go. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Yep, bye. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and so Michelle Parks has sent her poem over. We got it. Let's call it Michelle Parks while we're waiting for Bill Friedman. Hey, Michelle. Uh, oh, we lost you. Let me call you back. It dropped. Hello? Hey, Michelle. Hey, how, is, how, how, how are you? I'm great. It's great to see you. And it's the first time I've seen you in the in the light, I think. Usually you, when you call yeah. in, it's um, the, rattle, the rattle cast on Tuesday night, and um, it's pitch black. <laughs> yeah, I'm pre pretty much a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. And um, that's just who I am. So life is beautiful that way. Um, and I had my um, poem, Cognitive Dissonance. I haven't slept for days, as though my wiring has been stolen, as though my voice started rising, but nothing would come out. Thoughts strangle process, infiltrate known data. There's cancer here. I hear the ringing bells. Why the choked screaming? Why deterioration? Why foundations crumbling as new pathways emerge? Why am I fucking gasping? The shit is autonomic. Take a breath. I haven't slept for days as though my brothers have fallen, as though hope has been forgotten, as though there's logic in hate. I haven't slept for days as though my machinery is broken, as though my heart has started racing, as though an aneurysm is forming, as though I'm sinking under waves. Did you hear the babies crying? Did you look at pigmentation? Did they recoil when you touched them? Or did they cling to your embrace? 
Did you hear the whispered voices? Did they lead you down a hallway? Did they take you on a train? Did they hide your face? Did they call you nigger? Did they kick you? Did they shove you? Did they stand up for you or call you a disgrace? I haven't slept for days and I can't stop the stopping and I can no longer stand in place. I haven't ate in days. I need to feel the hunger. I need to feel this loss and justifiable rage. I haven't looked in a mirror. I'm scared I'll see my shame. I didn't think silence is compliance because I didn't think to think that way. I have not processed all that's happened. I haven't lived your story. I have not always thought to ask, what's your name? I can hold your hands. I can meet your children. I can protest standing with you for those whom no breath remains. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Rochelle. That was a powerful poem. And uh, I got a little teary-eyed listening to you read it, too. A great reading of it, too, Michelle. So much power in that. Thanks so much for sharing it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good rest of your day. You, too. Bye. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, let's go back to um, Bill Friedman. Hey, Bill. Uh, welcome back to uh, Poetry Spawn Live. <laughs> that was a short recess. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. we got, we right. got a great poem. You should go back and um, and listen to it, what you missed. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have a, yeah I, I would love to hear it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you just go to our YouTube page, you'll see it, and then uh, you can find the spot. But there are a bunch of great poems today. Um, everybody's really knocking it out of the ballpark. Um, Terrific. So, so your Terrific. poem uh, you wanted to share was a correction. And, uh, and, and you yeah. said it would be, it would be obvious um, what it's yeah. about. So, um, so yeah, it's about, you know, the, the cop and the neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, go ahead whenever you're ready. Uh, correction. His knee was on the black man's neck, not as some believed, but to keep his immortal soul from rising prematurely. As Jews lay stones on the graves of dear ones, newly dead. And his knee, as those who knew him best could see, did not lie still upon that throat, but pumped as he'd been trained to place the heels of hands above the dormant heart and in the pulsing rhythms of the healer and the sacred psalms, press, release, and press to waken it as a mother wakes her reluctant child for school. His hand was in his pocket, reaching, as he'd explained long after, long after the impulsive mob prejudged him, for a cigarette to calm the man, whom he could tell, though he did not know why, was growing anxious, tense, or a honey-sweetened lozenge to soothe the soreness in his throat. And he stared, as we saw, directly at the camera, his moist eyes, were they all too blinded by their hate to see this, pleading for someone to come quickly to the aid of this unfortunate black man, crying. He would have heard were they not so rudely chanting, I can't breathe. Yeah, thanks so much. That was uh, Bill Friedman reading his poem, uh, Correction. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that, Bill. Another excellent poem. We've just been having great poems all day. Um, thanks for, thanks for uh, calling in and sharing. It's always a pleasure. Sure, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, Thank you. Good one. Okay, let's. We have a little bit more time. Um, let's see. Do we have? We have time for like one more person. Trying to figure out who. Let's see who I actually talked to and who I haven't. Um, let's do this eight four seven number. Phone is ringing at an eight four seven. Hey, this is Tim. Hello. This is Tim with Rattle. Did you want to share a poem today? I did. This is Kashyana Singh. Tim, can you hear me fine? I, I can. We can hear you great. Thanks so much for calling. Um, I don't remember if you've called in, but I, uh, have you called in before and read a poem? 
I have a couple of times. Okay, I thought so. I thought so. But it's great to see you again. Um, always a pleasure. Um, did you submit the poem that you wanted to read, or um, did you email it to me? I, I did submit it to Poets Respond. Okay. It's called uh, Godspeed, Bob okay. and Doug. Okay, let me try to find it. Um, yep, yeah, here it is. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. And, and do you want to say anything about what it's about? Yes, real quick. Um, this is from a couple of weeks ago. And um, one of I, I read an article where one, of, I think it was Brian Merchant, who noted how the nation was briefly distracted by the launch of the rocket built and operated really not by NASA, but by SpaceX, the company founded by a billionaire and the symbolism of a billionaire-owned for-profit space company launching us astronauts high above the heads of thousands of people mm -hmm. while they were protesting yeah, the brutality and everything that they was going on with George Floyd. Yeah, I don't know if you read um, Amit Majmadar's poem that we published last week about it, but there's one line, I did. It's the news quiz, and he says it was... Um, I can't remember exactly. It was but something beautiful. Like, but he he's called it something like the um, the most extreme case of white flight, <laughs> or, or something like yes. that. Yes. Because I thought in a, a, I think that was a beautiful poem. As yeah, well. that was. Yeah. So so this is Godspeed, Bob and Doug, and um, go ahead and read it whenever you're ready, and I'll make sure people can actually hear you <laughs> this time. Okay. Oh yes, we could. I couldn't hear the last poem. I was disappointed. Um, yeah. Well, we we did it if know. you didn't hear it. So, but we're good. Yeah, we're okay. good. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, Godspeed, Bob and Doug, it's in three sections of one. As you spit into tired sanctuary of a precarious sky, ripping it apart into shards of a mother's heart, I rinse the lingering scent of death from my tongue, and I try to ask you to bring back for me a rosary in colorful chintz. I ask you to bring back for me a rosary made of the fierceness of blossoming, blossoming plants, strung precariously into threads, plucked from the sun-dawned skies, permeated with humming sounds of chants that hang suspended in particles of penance from these places you're going to visit. Two, as you pierce the eye of my merciful God, as you surrender into a whirling gravity smeared with charcoal of furious caresses, men killed little by little by brothers, flawed as you hone into the growls of your machine, your console, you leave behind. You leave behind screams of men rendered to death by other men. You leave behind mountains staggering under the weight of whales, you leave behind an exploding ocean unable to embody the, the wounds of her own shores. You leave behind men with their mouths open and upwards as they wait to swallow the demons. Your blazing hair will leave behind men who wait for the auspicious hour when your oblong ascent will pierce into comatose souls of every scripture written across that mezzanine blue of a pining imperious. Four, as you spit into the tired sanctuary of those precarious seven heavens, you leave behind the shoal where we become meteors of sins unfor unforgiven. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. Thank you, Tim. Thanks so much. That was Kashiana Singh reading Godspeed, Bob and Doug. Uh, she's calling in from Vernon Hills, Illinois, I should have said. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you, Kashiana. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you doing this. Bye-bye. Yeah, always my pleasure. Bye. Okay, let's do, um, let's try one more person. Um, let's see. So, um, Jess D, we'll try over Skype and then we have her phone number too. Uh, Jess, Jessica Dawson from Chicago. Ah, Jessica Dawson. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I said Jess D, so I wasn't sure. Okay. So, um, oh, it's because I'm so paranoid to put like information on things like that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so yeah, I just wrote D. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't blame you at all. Um, so what poem? You're going to be the last one up and we're definitely back live everywhere. Um, what did you want to share today? 
Okay. Um, so I feel like normally I try to share like lighter things or funnier things, even if they're dark topics. This one is just um, also it's it's dark and it's um, it's called Yada Yada, and um, the poem is about um, it's kind of a call to our future selves and also our past selves. And I hope that comes through in the poem. I'm not um, being mean to anybody right now. I just, I don't want the fervor to die down on where we stand. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, I am ready if it's, uh, if it's up. Yeah, I have it. So go ahead. Okay. Yada, yada. We yada, yada, our privilege in the wakes and the aftermaths of yada, yada. You get it. The world is shit, and we protest in our new cause t-shirts, signs still wet from glue, marker smear ready for the streets. Our closets are filled with the archaeological remains of our complacency. We post until we are bored. We yada yada human rights for everyone. Uh, Excellent. I love that, um, that, that way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Thanks so much for sharing that, Jessica. Yeah, thanks for um, squeezing me in and going through the trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. Well, I didn't want to leave everybody hanging as if the you know the world just stopped or something. So um, I'm glad we could get get the stream back working again. Um, that happened one time before, and I think it just cuts off and then starts up all over again. So um, anyway, thanks so much for joining us, Jessica, and um, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so that was Jessica Dawson uh, from Chicago, the Chicago Jessica Dawson, uh, reading Yada Yada. Thanks so much for sharing that, Jessica. And thanks to everybody who uh, joined Poetrespond Live today. Sorry for the couple technical difficulties. Um, and sorry that my software completely froze, which um, is very unusual. But um, I'm glad it didn't take too long and, and people seem to hang around. So um, thanks for that, too. Um, now, we're going to take a break this week from the uh, Rattlecast, I think. So so we're not going to have a Rattlecast on Tuesday, but we'll be back. Um, we will, of course, do Critique of the Week on Friday. And then we'll be right back here with a um, another Poet Respond open mic show next Sunday. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have Eric Campbell. I don't have a graphic up yet, but uh, Eric Campbell is going to be the guest uh, Tuesday. What would that be? That would be um, June 23rd. So we're going to take a little bit of a break just to catch my breath a little bit. And uh, we'll be back with the Rattlecast. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll keep doing all the other stuff that we do. And um, I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.